Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to something incredibly different. Something that I'm actually really excited to do, I'm not going to lie. Welcome to Football Manager 2022. It's been a long, long time I've been playing this game and I've played it on this channel for numerous years. And with the international break falling right now at this moment and very little to talk about when it comes to real life Celtic, I thought why don't we create a universe where I actually manage Celtic? What a horrible idea. Now, I understand that this is not for everybody and people will be thinking to themselves right now, Ryan, what are you becoming? What is this channel? If you've been on this channel long enough, you remember the roots of this channel was stuff like Football Manager, it was like the FIFA Career Mode series, it was stuff that wasn't necessarily talking about Celtic every day, and people loved it, and people subscribed to me for it, so I thought, why don't we do a little bit of a throwback and actually sit down and play a video game? But that doesn't mean that I'm done with Celtic stuff. If anything happens over this coming two weeks, there'll be videos up talking about Celtic, there'll be podcasts up talking about Celtic. I will still be here to talk about the real Celtic, but to fill that massive void where my channel dies for two weeks, I thought, why don't we have some fun? Why don't we play Football Manager? So, brace yourselves, strap yourselves in, and get ready for what is going to be a series that will take us up to the end of the international break, and if it goes well, we will continue it on Twitch post the international break. So, let's just get into it, shall we? Here it is, Football Manager 2022. The full game is now out, it was out today, and we're here to do the Celtic rebuild. Now, in real life, Celtic lost the title last season. We lost 10 in a row, Neil Lennon fucked us, basically. That's just the way to put it. But we are here. It's no longer Ange Postacoglu. It's Ryan Fitzsimons, and we're here for my rebuild. Not Ange's rebuild, my rebuild of Celtic. It's going to be incredibly fun, and I'm ready to pick up the pieces from what Neil Lennon has left of a, a broken team. £12,000 a week, not too bad for a first job, is it? That's that's quite good, that. But here we are, we've taken over from Ange. We'll kid on, Ange was never here. We'll just pretend that that didn't happen. Uh, here is the everything we need to know about the club, of course. You know, 51-time champions. We've won the European Cup. Some clubs in Scotland will just never do that. Um, yeah, everything looks great. Transfer budget, £4.5 million. Pounds. Now, for a rebuild, it's not the greatest budget. Not going to lie. But we might be able to sell a couple of players. We've already technically signed a lot of players with all the new signings being at Celtic in this. Uh, but most importantly, what we need to do this season is, is take back that league title. Now, I know it's a rebuild, but I do not want to lose the league title this season. I want it back. And here is what the, 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 the Celtic board or the, the assistant manager or whoever. No, it's Michael Nichols. Oh, it's Specky. It's him. It's Specky. It's Nicholson. This is what he thinks our best 11 is. It's a 4 3 3. It's probably what we're going to try and play. We'll get into that. But as what they think our best 11 is. No Jota in the best 11, as you'll see there. Jota is on loan, of course. Um, but yeah, that's what they think the best 11 is. Julian in there rather than Starfield. He's obviously out injured. We'll go in, we'll dive in, we'll set everything up in this episode. So here is the board expectations for the season. Um, maintain the club's stature as the most reputable team in Scotland. <laughs> stature will never go away. Um, work within the wage budget. Uh, and for the end of the current season, it's it's not even win the league, it's qualify for the Champions League. Now, uh, you, there's two spaces for the Champions League, of course. The first being automatic qualification, the second being... So they don't even want us to win the league at the end of this season. Now, I think that's a lack of ambition from you, Mick Nicholson. I think that is very poor. They want us to win the Scottish Cup, they want us to, they want us to win the Cup double. But they don't want us to win the league. I think that's a very mixed expectation, but I suppose Champions League money is most important um, if we could get there, and they want me to reach the playoff round of the Champions League, now, this is the first time in a lot of a lot of years of playing Football Manager that we will not have an easy route to the Champions League, usually you're playing teams you beat about 15-0 on aggregate that doesn't happen anymore um, but yeah, after this season it's win the league, win the league, win the league, but we will win the league at the end of this season, that is what I'm here for, I'm not here to piss about, I'm not letting those bastards across the road win the league um yeah let's just schedule all of that as i don't want a meeting every week we'll go every month for the backroom staff and yeah bang we're in now to people who play football manager you know the sort of ins and outs for people who don't play football manager then there is yeah it's not going to really work uh, for you guys is it you're going to have to have a lot of exp things explained to you and i'll try and do that along the way there is some new stuff this year like the data hub which i am going to be absolutely ho the data shows we should be winning these games i, I, I just 
don't know if I'm going to be able to use it as well as some others would. I'm not going to pretend I know too much about football data and all the rest of it, but we will give it a good bash. That's new. There's some other new features. The Gagan Press is no longer as effective as it once was, so it's going to be an interesting year. Um, but we are here. We're, we're the, we are the manager. We have entered Parkers as the new boss, and I'm ready to take back the league title. Um, contracts expiring at the end of this season. They've not given Ralston his new deal in this game yet. Griffiths, <laughs> you'll be gone, boy. I'm actually quite stunned that Ralston... Ha Ralston's got three and a half star potential in this game. His stats aren't actually that bad. They've, they've gave him quite a decent profile. Um, but Of course, the way he's played in real life deserves a decent profile, but I just didn't think that he would make the cut for this year's game. I thought that it would be a bit too late. So we may as well offer him that contract that he got in real life. He doesn't mind being a fringe player either, so he's good to have around. Um, current ability only two and a half star, but the rest of the players just now, yeah, there's a couple of them that we'll have to visit and, and, and offer contracts, I think, but we'll get to that at a suitable time. The first thing we've got to do is look at what we're working with. Look at the squad. What do we need? Moving forward, what transfers will we be making? Um, what do you, top transfer window deals? Kieran Tierney. Kieran Tierney left two years ago. Why is Tierney in here? <laughs> I'm talking about Tierney, actually, in my mug. This is an old mug, isn't it? Sapman beat on. Christ, can I believe I bought that? So, this is the team. Let's sort it by reports and see what we are dealing with. It's going to be interesting to see players like Kyogo Furuhashi because you've never used him in FM before, never seen him, and, and before people start, right, and people go, oh, do sign all these Japanese players for your rebuild and all the rest of it, no, because the Japanese league isn't in Football Manager, <laughs> it's one of the only leagues that's actually not in the game, so you can't sign any of them, um, also, Kyogo's going to be an interesting one, I think that in this he may be better as a left winger, because look at his finishing stat, it's only 11, now, I don't want to start any slander on my boy, the love of my life, but 11 isn't great for a striker. So it is a massive year, and it's a transitional year in Football Manager, because every year you usually have Ayer and Edouard, and all these players have great potential, and you sell for massive prices, but if you look, they think the best player in their squad is Christopher Julien, which is bad, he's injured for still another three months. Beyond that, Jota looks to be good this year, look at that, oh, Jota looks tasty, by the way. Yeah, he's got to be in the starting 11. Kyogo will just need to, to, to try and play up front and see if it works. Jota looks brilliant. Turnbull obviously has a really good profile this year after being player of the season last year. So Turnbull will be of great use. Callum McGregor, they look as though... They, his stats are a bit disappointing for, for one of the best players in the country. Technically, I mean, they've, they've kind of robbed him. Uh, and even physically, this, this is a guy who only has apparently 15 stamina and 15 natural fitness. He's played more football than most players in the world, for Christ's sake. I think that's a bit of a robbery, that. Um, James Forrest, Cameron Carter-Vickers is up near the top as well. We have obviously got Joe Hart. Yes, he looks decent. Tell him, lad. <laughs> He actually looks okay, he doesn't look the greatest, but he'll do us, he'll do us, Joe Hart, I think he'll be fine. We've got obviously a lot of the new guys in here, Josip Juranovic, I'm looking forward to using him in this squad. James McCarthy is actually, of course, quite a decent player in this game. Don't know how fit he'll be throughout the season. Carl Starfield, one of the new boys as well, his profile's okay, lacking a little bit to be desired. Cameron Carter-Vickers, I think, will be a very strong player, look at that. Stats look really, really good for him. Um... And overall, it's a decent enough squad. Vasilius Barkas, look how they've look how they've massacred my boy. Look at that, what a sin. In terms of potential, they have given they've given great profiles to Stephen Welsh this year. He's got a four and a half star potential, so he might actually grow into a very important player in this rebuild save. Liel Abada up there as well with good potential, close to five stars perhaps. He looks like he could have an okay profile at the start of the game as well. Ayeti's up there for. He's only got 11 finishes as well. He's got the same finishing as Kyogo. But what is Giacomacus? We need to have a look at Giacomacus, I think. Giacomacus is going to be... He's got 15 finishing! Christ, he might be a monster in this, by the way. Because look at his physical stats too. Christ, he could be decent. So what are we going to be playing? How are we going to be working this Celtic side? Well, uh, I want to go for the kind of 4-3-3. Three, three. Now, this is my... This isn't going to be quite Ange Ball, is it? Let's be honest. No one can replicate Ange Ball. Ange Ball is a thing of its own. It's his system and it's just the way he gets him playing. I don't think I'll be as good as that. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, I want to be. Uh, how do I want to play football? I'm going to create my own style. Now, Tick Attack is kind of coming out to me if we want to resemble Ange Ball with the kind of build up and play and look for the opportunities but I would like to be a bit more brutal a little bit more lethal you could say 
in my football when he scored goals. Um, the 4 2 1, 4 2 3 1 gig and press is apparently dead. Uh, from what I'm hearing, it's apparently not what it has been for the last three years when it was just working with every team he used. They have adjusted the game so that you can't just play gig and press week in, week out without your players actually dying on you. So there has been changes made to the game in that sense. I think 4 3 3 makes the most sense to me this season. I think that that's where I want to go. I think that's what Celtic are equipped for at this moment in time. And it'll allow me to play football close to Ange Ball, but also putting my own spin on it. But before we get into instructions and everything, we need to really look at what positions we need because coming into the second episode that's where i want to make my signings right goalkeeper of course joe hart decent get him in that's i love him i just need to have him in there uh right back yep that's made for juranovic of course center halves from now is going to be that partnership of carl vickers and carol starfield because of course the injury sustained to um mr julian now starfield is a preferred right foot oh there's me away there he's a preferred right footer carl vickers preferred right footer as well so Slightly annoying we don't have a left footed centre back, but it'll do for now. Now, left back is one of the positions that we will need to invest in. Uh, Liam Scales in this game, I'm not sure how, I don't think he'll be of great use to this. He doesn't look as though he grows out of this sort of region. His potential doesn't look great. He could be of use. But let's be honest, we can do better than your man Greg here. Greg, he actually doesn't look like he's that bad in this. He looks decent, but I think that it's one of the areas we should probably prioritise in, in this squad. I think that would be quite smart to do. Um, now the question is, what do we do about this? Do we play McGregor deep? Do we bring McGregor up the park? Do we look to sign someone else? Now McCarthy, the thing is, James McCarthy might actually be of use in this save, which is absolutely mental su to suggest, considering the impact on Celtic in real life at the moment, but he actually is quite a decent player, and he's probably one of the higher sort of players in the squad in terms of their, their ratings. So McCarthy might actually be an option there. I don't want to waste Cal McGregor in at the defensive midfielder in this. I want to use McGregor in the middle of the park, I think, with David Turnbull. I think that Rogic and Turnbull is something that we have to end, it needs, to be, it needs to go, and we're going to end it in this save. Um, both of them will get time over this in, in, this save, but Rogic also likes to play up in the 4-2-3-1 as well in this. I don't think it's going to quite work out for him. McGregor, on the other hand, he can play in that defensive mid, that's the thing. And maybe it'll suit him better with the lesser technical stats. And Turnbull we can't neglect, we need to play Turnbull. So I think it's those two anyway um, for the middle of the part just now. I think we sign another midfielder though. I think that we... I, I can't justify playing McCarthy there for the entire season. I can't justify playing Nier Beaton or Asmaila Soro there for this entire season. Asmaila Soro actually looks like he might be quite good in this save, to be quite honest, in this game. But I think maybe a centre mid would be a smart option to sign. Oh, Forrest isn't injured in this. Well, that's handy. It's nice having Forrest available. His stats look as though they've took a little bit of a hit. And then the front three, off the top of my head, is obviously going to be that. But I would kind of like to play Abada rather than, than Forrest, even though his stats aren't as good yet. I think that working on his potential and getting that from the start will be very important. So I think I'm going to go with those three. Um, <clears throat> we'll need to maybe look at how Kyogo will play in this game and how it will work because he deserves probably a better finishing stat. Um, but that could be a bit of a pain as we move on. But right now, off the top of my head, if I take out McCarthy, those are the two positions I think I want to improve the most. The left back and the defensive midfielder area. I'm going to go and set up like the, the instructions and such just now and I'll come back once I've got all that and I've got a bench sorted and we'll look at our squad depth. So I think this is what we're going to roll with for the year. I've set this up. I've named it the first tactic, of course, because it's the first tactic of the year. Just so people think it, it, it was me that made it, by Anyway, I'm not downloading tactics. But that is what I think I'm going to go with for the year. Very simple, 4 3 3. We stay positive and we, all the instructions are kind of like press and attack. And, and I want to build from the back as well. As I said, we're, we're kind of going down that Ange Ball route, but I don't think we'll be as emphatic as that. But those two are the areas that I think I want to improve on. If we can make two quality signings in the left back and the, and the kind of defensive midfielder roles, I do know what I didn't do. I didn't apply like these. I didn't do these, but I'll do that in a moment what we need to do is look in there, I think, and that'll probably be what I want my scouts to do most. Now, in terms of staff, our staff look fine. I don't think we'll need to bring anybody else in. We've got our coaches. Is Danny here? Oh, please say Danny's here. Is he not in? Oh, is he away now? Where is he? In his ordinary clothes and everything. No here. Oh, Danny came to me and said to retire, Ryan. He's away. Oh, that's a sin. 
Well, that's that. Um, so yeah, we've got a decent staffing just now. If we need to hire anybody, we probably need a, a, a kind of director of football or something brought in, a technical director. Um, physical, we're fine there. But I think in the, in the first episode, or sorry, in the next episode, I should say, I think the priority is going to be looking at midfielders, looking at left-backs. Now, if we look at what our scouts are saying, the players that they recommend the most right now, Phil Jones... <laughs> <laughs> Phil Jones, he's not coming anywhere. Mark Noble, who the fuck's doing the scouting here? Mark Noble, Phil Jones. Be be beyond that, uh, they look okay. Look a bit better. Longstaff, Davies, uh, Charlie Massonda, former Celtic player, in fact. John Suter, you'd be a decent sign, but we don't need a centre back right now. There is some decent players in there. We can have a look. I think that there's one guy that we should seriously take a look at for a moment and maybe make it the, the aim at the end of this episode to sign. Now, in terms of left-backs, there might not be many better options than this, and this could save us a lot of money as well, if we can somehow get this made. His contract's coming expiry. Frederick Bjorkan of Bodo Glimt would be a fantastic sign. I think we spoke about him on the channel before as an option for Celtic, but his contract is near expiry. The club's interest in him suggests this could be quality. United, City, Chelsea, Lille, the French champions, Leipzig, Napoli, you know, these are clubs all interested and Frederick Bjorkan. Now, that probably means he's, he's not going to come to us. He's probably going to go to a Manchester City or something. But if we can have a, a, a think about it, we can maybe... So, his agent says, thanks for indicating your interest in Frederick. He's willing to consider all options here, most of what he's been looking for. Thanks for the feedback. That'll do. I think that it would be smart to make an, an offer to end off this episode for Bjorkan. And when we come back, we can look at sentiments of other left-back options. I think that he could be a, a massive, massive player for us. My client isn't convinced by the prospect of playing for your club. He's looking for the following as a starting point, but you need to add further incentives in order to convince him. Right, so he wants more than that. Let's just say very quickly that he can treat the club as a stepping stone. That that, that can work. Uh, big pay rise, we'll give him that. Um, we'll improve the coaching team. We'll give him that. Because I do want to actually improve the coaching team. And I think that should be enough to hopefully sway him. Okay, I feel that you're not close enough. We've, oh. So what else do you want, Frederick? Like, what else can I offer you? Like, s realistically, the long term win the Cinch Premiership. This I want to win it this season. I want to win it now. I don't want to. Talk, I I want to offer him a, a chance to win the title this season, but I don't think I can actually do that. Uh, well, I point. I'm not going to invite, make him captain or anything like that. Um. I play him in his preferred position and role. I'm trying to offer him everything that's realistic. We're going to bring in a suitable sign to help the player settle. The long term aim for the club is to win. I'm just going to say win the trophy because that'll probably look better. This is so much I'm offering this guy. Like, surely he can't say no. Um, and I'll look to strengthen the midfield. That should be enough, no? Fuck you! All oh, right, okay. Bjorn can say no. Does he doesn't want to join us? So. Frederick's, Frederick's off the cards. But that, that'll do it for the introductory episode to, to Football Manager 2022. I'm looking forward to this. If I look at the schedule, when we come into the next episode, we should be playing Michelin in that Champions League game. Can we right the wrongs of what went wrong in real life? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I am looking forward to it. And then we've got the league campaign uh, as following the, the way it was in your life so i am um, yeah buzzing absolutely buzzing to get this underway for the next couple of weeks while the international break is on please let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you want another episode tomorrow you know what you have to do please smash that like button can we get 200 300 likes please smash it and there'll be an episode as soon as possible thank you for watching i'll see you all next time